The Minnesota Media Archive is brought to you by North Metro TV. Your support helps make the archive possible. Please consider a one-time donation. The past comes alive at North Metro TV, where we can help you transfer your old videotapes, films, cassette tapes, record albums, and even photographs and slides to DVD and digital so you can enjoy them again. North Metro TV, bringing the past to life. Okay, welcome to Blaine. Uh, it is a match between the Canadians and the U.S. National Developmental Sides. Uh, today will be another Can-Am match, and the Can-Am matches have been going on since 1987. It has been quite the tradition. It's been a very hard-fought bunch of games between these two very competitive teams. Though usually the Can-Am matches, the Canadian-American matches, have been the full sides, the full international sides. This match this year, because of games earlier in the season, is between the developmental sides. Many of the players you'll see have been capped by their countries, but this is the up and coming players for both these countries, so this should be an incredibly aggressive match. Obviously the team in red is the Canadians, and uh, they have been here since Tuesday training. The team in blue are the Americans, and they have been here since Wednesday. Uh, it's been a uh, very entertaining week of practice for both clubs, and uh, this should be a very, very entertaining match. The Canadians are a very physical team. Uh, that's one thing about the Canadians that's very nice, is they play a very hard-fought game where the Americans are known more for finesse, so this should be a very fun match to watch. The Americans will be kicking. The game is always started by a, a drop kick, at half field, it must go 10 meters. And for those of you new to rugby, I will explain the laws as things develop on the field. The referee is signaling for the kickoff and the game is on. The Canadians have taken it. A very nice tackle by the Americans. Now what it looks like total mayhem to you is the two teams fighting for the ball on the ground. When the ball is on the ground like that, the only way for them to get it out is to heel it back with their feet and drive over it. Canadians trying to do a punch play, stopped by Libby Kaplan on defense. Canadians have maintained it and they have knocked it on. For those of you new to the game, if the ball is thrown forward or dropped accidentally, it is an advantage to the Americans as they use the ball now. They're attacking. Americans still with the ball and the referee has signal advantage uh, very much like soccer and other possession sports when an advantage happens for one club they're allowed to go for a, a slight period of time until the referee deems whether the advantage helped their team or did not so because it was a knock on a slight thrown forward the americans are awarded the ball and now you're going to see your first scrum which is one thing everybody associates rugby with eight players from each side bound together, confronting each other. The attacking team will put the ball in the middle and the players in there will hook the ball backwards and try to drive over the ball. It's a very physical confrontation and players that are forwards love playing this and this is their favorite part of the game. The ball's been hooked by the Americans, cleanly back to the aide who picks, attacks to the strong side. The flanker attacks, very good play by the Americans. Ah. What the referee is signaling now is when a player is tackled, they must immediately pl place the ball on the ground. If one of the defending team tries to confront them and pull the ball, they must release it. The American player held the ball and therefore was called for a penalty. The Canadians have the option. The Canadians have the option on a penalty to kick directly out of bounds or tap it and go forwards. And the Canadians have kicked out of bounds. Now for you, all you play 
all you spectators new to the game, kicking out of bounds in rugby, the team that kicks out of bounds, the other team gets a throw in except on a penalty. But since the Canadians opted to try to run and then decided to kick, the throw in will be to the Americans. And they call this a line out, much like a jump ball in basketball with a lot of different players. Player throws in, and the Canadians steal the ball. Uh, the American coaches won't be happy with that. What happens in the lineouts is players jump for the ball and they have teammates supporting them, actually lifting them up in the air. And it's a very, very, a lot of teamwork and uh, going with that. As you can, as you can watch, you can wa watch on the replay as she goes up, the Canadians get in front of her and steal the ball. Okay, we're, we're back now to the scrum. The American scrum half throws the ball to the fly, inside. Nice crash, American forward supporting, but the Canadians are driving over. They could have stolen this ball. No, but the Americans still have it. Canadians counter, and it's gonna be out of bounds. Uh, in rugby, the only way to advance the ball is to run forward or to kick it. Uh, that's the only options. Passing has to be lateral or backwards to move the ball. As you noted, the American scrum half on that play chose to kick to advance it forward, but the Canadians got it. But they ended up going out of bounds, and now it's an American scrum. Ball's placed in by the scrum half. They win the ball, picked up by the eight, who's tackled immediately by the Canadians, presented well. It's now out to the fly half who chose to kick, fullback and the Canadian team covering out of position. It bounces into the try zone and she's forced to touch it down. It'll be a 22 dropout. Uh, if a team runs or places a ball into the end zone without having possession, the other team will kick off from their 22. And this is the Canadians, and it's a drop kick. The Canadians are playing into the wind, so all their kicks are gonna be fairly low at this point. It's picked up by Libby Kaplan, who runs and pass to the fullback. Center now. Tasha Henry is now running. She's been tackled. The Americans are trying to regroup. The Canadians have stolen the ball. The Canadian fly half now has the ball. Looped beautifully by their second row out to their wing. And that was Tara Eckert who just got uh, tackled pretty heavily by the Americans. Americans now are recovering. As you can see, people, this is a non-stop game. That's the beauty of it is the motion. It just goes and goes and goes. The American scrum half has chosen to kick. And the ref is signaling an advantage that was given to the Americans. The Canadian team was offsides. Now, for those of you new to the game, what looked like must look like total mayhem to you is whenever a rock or mall, a rock being the ball on the ground or a mall, the ball being in the air, is formed, everybody from that side must be behind their own team's last foot. So if they get in front of that last foot, they're off sides and a penalty is awarded. So the fly half, Christian Baja has kicked for touch. The Americans will have a line out inside the Canadian 22 and this is an excellent attacking position for the Americans. We'll see what kind of strategy the Americans are using. They are going with a full line out that's all eight forwards. Uh, mostly it happens what happens here is the team that wins will try to drive the ball. Let's see what they do. The throw is long, missed by the Americans. The penalty has been called on the Canadians for not marking numbers. You have to mark numbers across your opposite side. And if you note the ref's arm is cocked at 90 degrees, that means a free kick, not a penalty kick, which means they cannot go for points they're going to have to run a play. Scrum F has tapped the ball, given it to the forwards, running hard. Very nice crash by Jen Joyce. The ball's out to the forwards, and Christian Baja throws back in. Americans recycle the ball, back out to Christian. She's going to do a tap kick, but unfortunately with this wind, it'll probably, oh no, we could, and we have a score. Yes, Canadians misplayed the ball in their try zone, and Jen Sinkler has scored and a try in rugby is worth five points. Now the extra point or the attempt at goal after 
is taken directly behind the spot where she scored, and if she makes this kick, it's an additional two points. The other team cannot rush to block her till she makes forward motion towards the ball in an attempt to make the kick. Very nice play by Jen Sinkler. Jen Sinkler, who has been capped by the national squad, but she's a young and upcoming player, and she plays here for one of the Minnesota squads, the Minnesota Valkyries. She's a very quick, very, very talented player. And as you can tell, very optimistic. Christian Baja, the American fly off, is lining this up. And she has a wind at her back. She'll be attempting the conversion. The kick is straight enough. It has the distance, it's good. A very nice kick. The Americans are now up seven, nothing. Now, at, in rugby, different from American football, the team that scores gets the ball back. So it's the capitalist game. You keep scoring, you keep getting it back. So the Americans take the kick, uh, bounced off her chest and her hands, and it was accidentally knocked on. And as we talked about that earlier, throwing it forward or knocking it on is a, it is a, a, a minor infraction, so it's a scrum down with the Canadian side putting in. It's always the advantage to put it in. The Canadian scrum half puts the ball in and they've won the ball. They're holding the Canadian eight. Ah, the Americans have actually turned the scrum and stolen the ball. And their attack on the weak side. Nice play by Christian Baja out to the wing. That is Kate Turpin. Plays for Madison. She could be in. Oh, she's just short of the try zone. Unfortunately, she was tackled. She knocked on. The ball went forward from the tackle. And somebody played it well on the ground, which you cannot do. The Canadians are awarded a penalty. But it was a very nice break by the Americans. As you can see, Kate, nice break. She got there. But as she got tackled, it rolled forward. And then the Americans came diving in. Kate played it while she was on the ground. And that was the call. The Canadians have chosen to kick it out of bounds. So the Canadians will have a line out just outside the 22. Uh, what you'll see a lot in rugby is if the defending side is inside their 22, they are allowed to kick it directly out of bounds. And they get the line out would be where it crossed the line. If you're in front of the 22, the ball must bounce before going out of bounds or the, the line out is back where you kicked it. So here defensively, a lot of times they will kick for touch. But as they are against the wind, we'll have to see what they do. It's a long throw, errant throw, picked up by the Americans. Nice tackle by the Canadians, has actually turned her. Ah, but the Americans come out, Christian Baja again. Nice dummy, throws out to the centers, crashing. Nice support by the Americans. The Americans, and that was just basically messy rugby for a bit there. There was a knock on by one of the players. And like I said, when I say knock on, the ball just accidentally went forward. The Canadians now will put in the ball. As you can see, the Canadian scrum half, Tara K puts in the ball. It's been back to their eight. The throw is not very good, and they are, Americans are all over their player. They'll be lucky to clear this, and that's not gonna work very well. Uh, but it's very unfortunate the American actually couldn't handle the ball that got knocked on. Had him in deep trouble. But the Canadians are very, are very the Canadians are really struggling. Uh, the, Amer the, the referee has signaled that the Americans have been offsides, and so the Canadians will have the chance to either kick for touch or tap and do whatever they want. The defending side against the penalty must be 10 meters back. Throw's been out. Nice crash by the uh, blindside flanker, but she's tackled very, very strongly. The Canadians have recycled the ball. That was Rachel Hammond that made that nice tackle for the Americans. Canadians have the ball, they're gonna have to kick, but this isn't gonna help much for their position. It's still in the field of play. Excellent take, excellent take by Kate. Crashing up field, the Americans should be there. Nice support, they're right there. Farrah Douglas picks it up, stays nice and low. Scrum half takes it, fakes the crash, and we have accidental offsides. If you accidentally run into your own player, since you can't block in rugby, it's a minor infraction. 
and now the Canadians will have a scrum down. As you can see, this ball just goes back and forth, back and forth. That's the nice thing about this game and from a spectating standpoint is you're always watching action instead of having lots of timeouts. Canadians kick. Oh. As a player kicks it, you cannot hit a kicker. <laughs> that is pretty universal. Uh, the penalty choice is they can take a penalty where she kicked it or where the ball was caught. Canadians obviously have taken it upfield and they look to be calling a play and they are it's going to be out to the backs back to the forwards they're going to set it they're going to set a ruck center field try to attack from that it was a very strong punch from the Canadians very hard running number six for the Canadians and now the backs are definitely outnumbered the Americans are in trouble here driving forward they opted not to go out nice poach by the Americans but the Canadians regroup quickly going to their left Second row out, there's a very nice tackle by the Americans. American defense has been very strong, even though they've been outnumbered on a number of occasions. Canadian scrum half now passing it out. Fly half chooses an option back inside. Very nice play. The Canadian number eight, Katie Murray, who's their captain, has been all over the place. Strong second row run, very nice play. She breaks, long legs, pass, nice scoop up. Canadians free and the Canadian scores. A couple of broken tackles, but long legged run, and uh, Canadians have put five points on the board. So now the Canadians will uh, try their uh, extra point or point after, and uh, it'll be two. As you notice, she made a very nice scoop on the play. She had the strong forward against the smaller back through a great stiff arm blocked her off and just powered over for the line it's one thing in rugby high tackles a lot of times you eat that stiff arm and uh, jen sinkler got uh, kind of a nasty stiff arm on that one so i think she'll think uh i think she'll think differently next time she faces number eight about going high she'll probably go for that low tackle the Canadian inside center, Charlotte Haley, will be attempting the extra point. Anybody can attempt the extra point. Each team has their own designated kicker that's on the field. This is a very nice kick against the wind. Will it have the distance? Yes, it does, and it is a tie game, 7-7. The Americans will be kicking off at half field, and like we stated at the beginning, it is a drop kick. Very nice kick, very, very good approach. Strong kick, signed winder right through against the wind. It was very nice. That should not have that should not have happened. The Americans really let them off the hook. Oh, that should be a knock on by the Canadians. Oh, that's a big mistake by the Canadian team. The Americans will have a scrum down now, 10 meters from their try zone. There are eight players in the scrum and seven in the back line. And when you scrum down, all your forwards are pinned to the scrum. So this is usually a very good attacking platform for the attacking team. The Americans have the ball. They've chosen to go to the weak side of Jen Sinkler, who does a loop back to the scrum half, inside to the eight, who just got planted on a beautiful tackle. That, Like I said, that Canadian captain is all over the field, but the Americans have still regained possession. So even though it was the, Americans still have it. It's starting to be a total pie. It looks like it's to the Canadians have stolen the ball. Ah, but Christian Baj is all over. Even though they've the Canadians have kicked for touch, but it'll be an American line out at 10 meters. When the ball is on the ground, though, it look, may look like total mayhem to everybody who's not accustomed to the game. They actually are in control somewhat of what's going on. The two teams are trying to drive over without diving over. Scrum half throws back in. As you can see, Liddy, she just gets planted. So now the Americans will be throwing in. That's Rachel Hammond. She'll be throwing in. Americans, American throw has been affected by the wind. Canadians have won the ball. The referee is signaling advantage to the Canadians. The Canadians are taking that advantage by trying to run it. They've done an inside switch. The advantage has been gained. 
and now the Canadians are crashing. They're running blasts right off of the rocks and malls. Canadians still are possessing the ball. The Americans moving backwards. Canadians are now been outnumbered by the Americans. This is actually slow ball. It's very nice hit on the scrum mat, but they call it for offsides. As you may, when you notice these rocks and malls, they have to be behind the last foot. Canadians do quick ball out to their hard running Blindside flanker Marlene Donaldson, uh, she's been tackled, uh, another tackle, they're trying, the Canadians obviously their strategy is to punch, 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 then go wide. They have the numbers now, we'll see what happens. It's a break by the fullback. She has the wing, throws inside, very, very nice, nice cover by Kate Turpin. Very nice cover. Jen Sinkler on the field, throw back in, driven out of bounds. Uh, very nice movement by the Canadians. They did a couple of punches up the middle, contained the defense, and then looped outside. But the weak side wing, Kate Turpin, came all the way across the field to make that tackle. Jen Sinkler quickly getting up, tackling the uh, inside center, and then the scrum half driving the fullback out of bounds. It's a very nice defense coverage. Unfortunate for the break, but the beauty of this is uh, the score is only the try. Giving up yardage is not that important. The Americans have won this. Christian Baja is going to kick for touch. The ball is out of bounds, and since she was behind the 22, the lineout will occur where the ball crossed the sidelines, and the throw-in will be by the other team. So the Canadians will have the lineout. You notice sometimes they come up with different numbers of players. The attacking team sets the numbers. So all, all the Canadians are in there. They're kind of playing around. They throw a back throw quickly off the top. And now we have a fullback in, very nice movement. Canadian forwards quickly on top, they recycle. Americans have to be careful here because all the Canadian backs are still out to the right. They have numbers. Uh, Americans have been caught off sides. You can see now the Canadian tactics are obviously to punch up alongside the breakdown, breakdown being the rock and malls. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to pin the Americans off sides because they're not retreating quickly enough. And they have caught them four or five times already in this half. And uh, the Americans are going to have to adapt to that strategy. The referee now is signaling that the Canadians are going to go for posts. On a penalty option, you have the option to kick for posts, which is three points, or you can kick it out of bounds or run it. They have to signal to the referee that they're going for points so the touch judges or the officials on the sidelines can run and get behind the goal post so they can help the referee decide whether it, the kick is good or not. If she makes this, it's worth three points. If she misses, the play is live and it, everything will happen from there. The kicker's calling for a holder because it is breezy. The wind is blowing from your left to right, so the Canadians are kicking into the wind. Charlotte Haley will be attempting this kick, and actually she kicked it wide for uh, as far, and it went out of the back end goal, so the Americans will have a 22 dropout. The Americans definitely dodged a bullet on that one. Dropout, Canadians allow it to bounce. It's been taken by the Canadian scrum half, and now the forwards are going to reform the Canadians. I would look for this whole punch mentality again. Uh, but the Americans have driven over and possibly stolen this ball. Uh, Canadians quickly regather, unfortunate for the Americans. And now the ball's in the air, so the Canadians are balling. Ball's been tossed now out. She's looking to her forwards, and there's the Canadian captain again. We're getting very used to her. She puts it up. They formed a rock. The Americans are trying to battle off, but the uh, Canadian uh, forwards are really handing it to them right now. They're taking this game over. The Americans are tackling well, but they're not there in numbers, and the Canadians are definitely out hustling them to the breakdown at this point. Canadians have won the ball, and they do have the ball going to the left. It's a breakthrough by the wing. Jen Sinkler nicely takes her. Second row crashing through. Forwards left crashing on the smaller backs. Canadian is thrown. It's been totally disrupted. The Canadian forwards tried to do a quick attack. The scrum half could not get the ball fast enough and the ball ended up going behind them. And that's very fortunate for the US. Line out will be to the United States. The referee has called a time on the field. One of the American players is down. 
Uh, that is totally up to the referee to stop play or not. The American trainer is coming on the field, and both teams will probably regroup here to talk about what they're going to do on this next play. The play that's been going on today has been, uh, it's Americans dominated early, but the uh, Canadians have gotten on track now. They're in, they've gotten into their game plan about crash, crash, and crash, and this does not bode well for the Americans because the Canadians will have the win in the second half. The old rugby adage is the wind is worth 10 points, so it's the Canadians can keep this close. Uh, they would think they have actually claimed victory for the first half. The player seems to be okay, just a little nick, and uh, the referee has called that we will start play again. The line out will be to the U.S. Rachel Hammond will be throwing in. The Americans are going with a full line out. Uh, throws gone to Lily Kaplan at the front. The Americans are driving. And they're mauling this. this. is a very common play for forwards. The Canadians will have to bring in most of their forwards to try to stop this. Scrum has back to Christian Baja, who's just kicked it over the top. It bounces infield and then goes out of bounds. The line out will be there. Luckily, Christian got that to bounce because when she kicked it, she was in front of the 22, but it was a very nice play. Christian Baja used to play here in Minnesota for the Minnesota Valkyries, but she now has moved to New York to play for the New York Women's Rugby Club. The referee is signaling that the throw, ah, the Americans have not matched numbers. It is a free kick to the Canadians. Americans must be back 10. Canadians quickly tap and go. Ah, it's a knock on by the Canadians. Uh, the Americans will love that. And the Canadian coaches will be <laughs> writing that down in their book and having a slight discussion at halftime. It's always an advantage to go quickly, but to give the other team the ball back off your advantage is very disheartening. Americans should use this well with the wind at their backs. I would anticipate that on the hook, Christian Baja may kick the ball. And just looking by the way the team is spread out on the Canadians, she may be kicking to her right. Let's see what happens here. American scrum half puts the ball in. Ball is out to Jen Sinkler. They're going to attack instead of kick. Oh, that was not good. Yes. The ball is out of bounds. You saw the American scrum half try to pick one out of midair. That is not very common in the rugby world. <laughs> uh, you usually try to catch it or fall on it. It's not soccer, as you know. Luckily, the Americans ended up getting the ball back. And I think what they're doing is they're yeah, well, the ball, the ball uh, rolled out of bounds, and because of the heat, they must be having a uh, timeout. But you're going to notice this is an eight pick, which is a fairly common. The ball actually floats to Jen Sinkler, who just about gets killed. But then she throws to the scrum half. Who decides it's better to swing and miss than catch and get killed? That's uh, not very rugby-like, but you know we have a very young team and and they'll learn from that mistake. There are, there are a lot of mistakes going on by both teams. Uh, there are a lot of nerves going on. Like I said before, these are developmental teams. They're trying to earn their spots to get onto the big club, and uh, they know they're being watched by the coaches, and every mistake costs them, and I think they're still a little nervous. They really haven't developed any flow to this game yet. The Canadians have been the only ones. So it's been a very choppy game and probably as disoriented as you are because you're watching rugby, this game hasn't helped much. It hasn't flowed very well. It hasn't done a lot of the characteristic wide open runs that we'd like to see in rugby. Hopefully they'll start uh, developing that. The Americans will be throwing in again. Rachel Hammond will be throwing in. Rachel Hammond is, is number two, is a position called the hooker. They are in the center of the scrub and they hook the ball back. And they usually on most teams are the ones that throw it in also, though they don't have to. Throwing the ball in. The Canadians have pre-jumped, which they and lifted, which allowed the Americans to throw in short. And that's Chris Tricano with the ball. The Americans are trying to set up a driving ball because the Canadian numbers are not there. The Canadians have stifled it fairly well, but the Americans have now broken free and they're out. They're allowed to keep driving. The advantage has been gained. The Americans are now out. Oh, they try to play to their forwards, but it was mishandled. 
and the Americans are trying now to force some things that were easily coming to them in the first 20 minutes. Uh, they have called Chris and Baja for diving and covering the ball and not releasing. The Canadians now have a quick penalty. It's been tapped out. Obviously, she's going to go to her forwards. She's going to go down. They'll go to their forwards again. Ah, but they've overrun, so it's going to need to come to their backs. Quick tap, a penalty on the Americans. The Americans are not back 10, so the Canadians are going to get advantage on this, and if they don't get anything, they're going to get another penalty. Scrum's been down, the Canadians are out. Center crash, tackled by the Americans. Nice play, and nothing has been gained. They're going to bring the ball back. One of the things I talked about earlier on a penalty is the team must be 10 meters back. The attacking team can tap and go whenever they want, but if the defending team is not back 10 meters, they cannot stop that running player until they get back 10. It's a big advantage. The Americans misplayed it. The Canadians will probably kick for touch and gain a huge territorial advantage. So the Canadians now will have a line out just about the 22, and the Canadians have totally taken over this game, though it is a very boring style of rugby. So try not to fall asleep. Hopefully this will pick up. Because all they're doing is crash, crash, no run. It's, this is the kind of game only a coach can love. Canadians have done very nice on the back of the line out. They've done a quick off the top to their forwards running. Scrum half wanted to come weak, but nobody was there. The backs are running a play. The Canadian fly half just got smacked by the inside center. Katie Stewart, who's known for her big hits. Americans are going to probably, ah, the Canadians have stolen the ball, though, that's unfortunately. Wake forward's got the ball, they're driving, and uh, this is very sloppy. Kathy Flores and uh, Candy Orsini are really going to have a talk with their team at halftime. The Americans have regained the ball, the wing has been tackled, forwards are there to try to recycle the ball, the Canadians have been signaled for offsides. Actually, the pull down there is the ref is saying that they intentionally pulled the player to the ground. And uh, when you're driving with more than two players from each team, you cannot collapse it to the ground. It's called collapsing a mall. Uh, it may look all the same to you, but it's one of the finer points. It's illegal because it's dangerous. Christian Baja is going to kick for touch to try to gain territorial advantage. He uses the wind quite nicely. Kicks about a 30-yard kick, and the Americans will have a line-out on the 10-meter, on their attacking 10-meter, which is 40 meters from the Canadian try zone. The Americans only have about 10, 12 minutes left in this half to use the wind, or they're going to have a long second half if this keeps up. Americans are going with a full line out again. The ball's been thrown. Libby Kaplan has taken it. The Americans have decided to drive. Canadians have stifled it quite well, but they seem to be regrouping. The ball is in the back. The Americans are starting to do a rolling mall. This can, they can continue to do this. Penalty has been called on the Canadians for collapsing it, just like I talked about before. Advantage has been gained. The Americans have possession. This is absolutely a free play, so the Americans will try to do something to go through. The advantage is still for the Americans. The American scrum half. Oh, they might. She might get away with that. Let's see what happens. And uh, no, the the Canadians now touch it down. It will be a 22 meter dropout. Unfortunately, the scrum half should not have kicked that. She should have kept it in hand with the advantage. They could have maybe gotten a penalty kick, but uh, she's a young player and uh, she'll learn from her mistakes. It's a short dropout, Triscontano contends. The Americans have won the ball. The Canadians have actually knocked it on, so the advantage is to the Americans. Maybe we'll do something from this. Nice throw out to the backs. Nicely taken, very nice tackle. Quickly recycled by Christian Baja. Out flanker, fullback. Very nice take by Jenny Goodfriend driving forwards. Forwards have it, they have a strong. Triscontano powering through. Very nice forearm to the head. Okay, let's go. Americans are now driving. This is where they should be with this wind. Canadians have stolen the ball, but the Americans are there with numbers. Uh, and the Americans, it's very hard to leave that ball on the ground when it's there, but they had to leave it. They tried to play the ball when there were players above it, and that is a Canadian advantage. Canadians will kick for touch. And since it was a penalty, it will also be their line out. Obviously, 
obviously they didn't they didn't gain much from that uh i don't know if that was an advantage or not but we'll see how the line out goes they still have the ball so as long as they have the ball that nothing bad can happen but i don't think that kicker is going to be too pleased with that kick ball came the uh, canadian fly half is taking the ball she's <laughs> Obviously, she duck hooked that one. It looks a lot like my drives lately, but uh, we'll have to. Uh, the coach will probably talk to her. She actually presented the ball to her foot properly, but uh, she didn't strike it very well. Scrum half looked to be cramping up, and so they have water on. There are no timeouts per se in rugby, but because of the heat and safety consciousness now that's come into all sports, their water breaks. The players can. You'll see trainers coming on with water. In the old days when this announcer used to play, we couldn't have water breaks till halftime. Of course, we weren't very good either, so. And the throw in now to the Canadians. They've taken the ball in a deep throw. They're setting up a drive. The Americans must stay back as they roll off. Good tackle by the Americans actually turn the Canadians. They're gonna have to fight for this one. They're gonna throw it back. They're gonna choose to run because the fly off now is a little jumpy after that shank before. They're now throwing out. Now the forwards are starting to get back into their methodical crashing ball. And against the wind, this is very smart play. They're going to kick. Now they chose to run. This is uh, choosing to run. Is, is, it's, it's tiring, but it's effective because they possess the ball and they're trying to draw the Americans off sides. The fly off comes across, takes nice. They have a two on one, and she's free on the outside. Cuts in nicely. Canadians are there. Uh, the Canadian player has been called for holding the ball on the ground while an American tried to take it from her. Christian Baja using the wind kicks it for touch. She wasn't really going for distance. She just wanted to get it out of bounds because the Americans feel that they can use the line out as a good attacking platform. So that's what they're trying to do right now is set that up. The Americans have been going with full lineouts the whole game. Let's see if they stick with that. It looks like they have. I'd say, uh, as you see, that is a front row player tying her shoes. It's an old veteran habit of getting a little rest. Okay, she now has the ball, throwing it in. Libby Kaplan's taking it. Very nice take. Driving ball by the Americans. The Canadians are defending it quite well with few players. Americans quickly out. A double fill by Sinkler. Now oh, Jenny Goodfriend on a break to Kate Turpin. Oh, that's too bad. It was a very nice break. The ball was just slightly in front of her, and Kate was unable to handle the pass. Since the ball was knocked forward, there'll be a scrum down to the Canadians. That was a great opportunity. Very nice play by the American backs. They dummied the, the centers on and used the wings coming around behind them. In rugby, you cannot block, but uh, you can use players can run in front of the ball as long as they don't obstruct the other team. Put in by the Canadians. The Canadian scrum has been fairly strong. They take it weak. The Canadians are not going to kick because their fly F has proven to be fairly worthless this half. Uh, she's going to kick again. And of course it just goes five meters so that's proven my point. And uh, hopefully she'll have a better half in the second half when she has the wind. But she obviously doesn't do well against the wind. Americans have a line out just outside the 22. Let's hope they can do something with this because time is running out in this half and then they'll have to go against the wind. They're electing to go with a full line out again. They'll probably go short to Libby, which they do. They're going to drive it, but the Canadians have collapsed it. So they're gonna have to move it wide. Christian Baja to Katie Stewart who drops it. Oh, that's unfortunate. That'll be a scrum down to the Canadians. This is a very good opportunity for the Canadians to attack to the right side. They have about 15 or 20 meters of right side of the field to attack, and scrum halves and eights love to do this. So you might see the player at the back of the pack for the Canadians pick and run to her right with the scrum half. Let's see if that happens. And yes, you'd almost think I coached. Let's see, the ball has been picked up by the flanker who is tackled by the Americans. Canadians still have possession. 
chosen to punch it up again on the blind side. The Canadians are trying to open up the strong side of the field, and they have it. They can get it out wide. They have numbers, but no, they choose to attack back inside, but they still have the numbers if they can recycle it wide to the right. Another crash. Ball's been recycled. Now they're going back to their right, not the American right. Oh, and luckily for the Americans, the Canadians knock it on. The referee's playing advantage. Can Americans have picked it up, gone weak side, a good burst down the weak side. Can Canadians have mu really messed up the ball, but the Americans have coming out with it again. Oh. And that was a uh, pretty errant toss out by a forward. I'm sure there'll be a little discussion at halftime about that play also. Uh, from a coaching standpoint, you don't really like to see the players throwing the ball above each other's heads because exposing the rib shot, the rib cage to lots of hard hits. Players down after that run. I, don't, I can't tell from here exactly who it is. It might be the hooker, Rachel Hammond. Uh, the trainers are out attending to her. Whenever anybody in the front row, a one, two, or three goes down, play will always stop because without those players, you cannot do the scrums or the lineouts safely. And so if it was a back who would be down, they might continue play, but not. It wasn't uh, Rachel Hammond, it was Farrah Douglas who's playing loose head prop. Fair plays for North Shore in Chicago. Referee signaling scrum down for the Canadians. There's three minutes left in this half, according to my clock, but time is running and the referee is really the only one who has any idea when the half really will end. Canadians have put it in and won the hook. The Americans have done a good job. The ball's been stolen by the Americans. The ball rolled out the other side. It's a very good opportunity for the Americans. Good pickup. Jen Joyce crashing in. Scrum half again does another crash play. The Americans power over for the try. Another five points tacked on by the Americans. The, uh, the scrum half took it and went laterally across the field. As she went laterally, one of the forwards came crashing back on the blind side. It's the open side flanker, Laura McDonald, who powered in and scored. Very nice play by the Americans. Laura is a very strong runner, has a low center of uh, gravity, and she's very hard to take in a short distance like that. She runs with a lot of power. Christian Baja using the wind. It's brought the ball back out to about 25 meters. She'll be using the wind. Let's see if she can make this. She's Right now, she's one for one. She's a sidewinder. Approaches the ball. It has the distance, but she's wide to the left. Nice attempt. So the score now is 12-7 USA. Canadians will be kicking off to the Americans. Fly off will be kicking off. Christy Smith, she chose to kick deep. Scrum half takes the ball, quickly hands off. The Americans are going to recycle the ball. I would think Christian would kick it. There we go. Very nice kick by Christian Baja. Kicking it behind the Canadian wing and chose the tactical option of pushing the ball downfield about 40 meters. Though the Canadians will have possession. It's a, it's a much safer place on the field to be in than where the Americans were just a moment ago. Canadians will be throwing in. The Canadians look to be setting up with a three-person lineout. The Americans must match. Right now their numbers are off. Yeah, the Americans are going to be called again for not matching numbers. At this level, that should not that should not happen ever. They're uh, going to have to regroup on that. The Canadians are running the punch. They're using their second rows and props very efficiently. The Canadians are recycling the ball, and they're going to go back, play the advantage on the Americans not marking numbers. Uh, 
I would think the Canadians might be, uh, no, nope, they're not going to kick for touch. I think they're going to try to run something and set something up here. They've been so successful on their punches that uh, they're going to try it again. It's out to their fly half, who obviously is going to come to their second row. We've seen this play about 50 times so far. The Americans have turned her in the tackle. Oh, nice clear up by the Canadian hooker. Americans do have the ball though, Christian Baja. Out, very nice. Jen Sinkler, but not being able to use her speed because the pass was slightly behind her. Ball's been taken by Katie Stewart. It's taken as strong into contact and driving hard. The Americans are with her. The Canadians have taken her to deck. If the, uh, yes. The ball initially was held in the air and did not go to deck. And because of that, the Canadians will get the scrum down because the Americans did not use ball that they had. Some of the Americans are showing a little sign of fatigue. That's not a good sign, but they have a very strong bench. So you might see some substitutions at halftime. Player down the scrum half again. She's up. It's hard to say if whether she was trying to just uh, waste a little time to uh, kill momentum or if she actually needed the time. It's kind of a veteran ploy. Hard to, hard to tell. The referee has broken that up because we can't hear it, but the referee is calling for a crouch engage. And on the engage, the offensive team must make first impact. In that play, the Americans were first. Canadians hook the ball back. Eight has taken it. Very nice play with the flanker coming around, bringing it to their wing. They're going to be setting up a recycle. Here comes the forwards on a punch again. They're going to recycle. It'll be out to their fly. We'll bring it back in. Very nice take by their outside center. They've been setting this up all half. Shelly Shaw on the break. Hits their fullback. It's a nice break. Aaron throw it to the wing, which is to the advantage of the Americans. Though the Canadians have quickly recycled inside center with the ball. I apologize that I don't know all the Canadians' names, but it's hard enough just figuring out the numbers here. Canadians driving forward, accidentally running into her own player. So that'll be a scrum to the Americans. There's not much time left. Uh, another player down. This time looks like a contact injury. <laughs> so, there's not much time left in this half. Uh, Halftime in uh, rugby is 10 minutes long. Whether they take the full 10 for this match, we won't know, but they'll take at least five. The half times are 40 minutes long running time. But for injuries, the ref keeps time, like I stated before. We're close to halftime now. And then at halftime, they will switch ends. Scrum down will be Americans put in by the scrum half. It's a row. Loop around to Christian Baja using her foot, which I think she should have been using a lot more this half, but a very nice kick. Puts the ball deep into the Canadians. The Canadians are going to be forced to put it out of bounds. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of time left. But very errant kick. The Canadians are off sides. This could be three points for the Americans easily if they don't do anything to get this. I think Christian Baja will attempt to get three points on this. I think they should go for goal because as t time's running out, if they attempt to go, uh, very smart play. Well coached team. Christian Baja will attempt. There's a penalty, as I said, one of the options on a penalty is to go for three points. Christian's a very good kicker, so hopefully we'll get three points here, and the Americans can go up 15-7 at halftime. They're allowed to use a T, obviously, as you see her placing it on the T. She's, she's one for two. Let's 
see if she can go two for three. Looks good from here. Is good. A very nice way to end the half with Christian Baja making that for three points. The Americans are up 15-7 at halftime. Let's take a replay of that. Christian has been using the win quite well this half. Of course, we'll see what happens. See, she keeps her head down very nicely, puts a lot of leg behind that. She could have made that from 40. So at halftime, it is 15-7 U.S. over Canada, and we're breaking. Second half is underway, the Canadians kicking off. Actually a sharp bouncy kick to the Americans who have taken it and are trying to regroup their forwards. A quick pass off to Christian Baja. This is gonna be very hard for the Americans going against the win. The Americans have not proven to be able to run against the Canadian forwards at all in the first half. So this could be a long half for the Americans. Oh, but a very nice break. Trisca Tricano starting that one with Rachel Hammond taking the ball. The US reclaiming. But against this wind, it's going to be very hard to clear. <laughs> Libby Kaplan taking a nice run. Nice pass off to Katie Stewart, who's tackled. Lisa Rowe reaching in for the ball. But oh, the Americans are off sides by a mile. Canadians with a quick break down the left side. Very nice break by their wing. I think the advantage has been gained. I haven't seen the call by the ref. And yes, it is. The Americans kick it out. So it will be a Canadian line out, actually was tipped by the Canadians, so it's going to be an American line out. Very quick start by the Canadians, as would be imagined, now having the wind. They uh, pretty much dominated play after the first 10 minutes using their forwards. I think now you'll see the Canadians start to open it up. What was a fairly methodical offense in the first half might be a lot more dynamic this half. They've already proven that their forwards can contain the ball. I think the Americans will be playing a lot of defense. The Canadians are going, uh, it's absolutely, it's been signaled correctly now by the touch judge. It is the Canadian ball. They're going with a full line out. It's been thrown to the back. How they got that, I have no idea. Like it bounced off somebody's head, but it was not thrown correctly. And the Americans are gonna have a scrum down. Anything, any minor infraction in a line out uh, if the other team decides to take a scrum, the scrum is on the 15 meter mark, which is that second line on the inside of the field. There's a line on the five and 15 meter mark. The scrum is to the Americans, back to the American fly half who kicks it. But as was shown by the Canadian fly half in the first half, kicking against this wind is not going to be easy. So very, very little gain on that. I think the Americans would be better suited to actually take the ball and run. Canadians now have a line out, jockeying around, full line out. They've won. They've actually brought it back in. Actually, though, it wasn't straight. I think the referee should have awarded the Americans the advantage of the free kick, but I'm just the announcer and he's the referee. Scrum down will go to the Americans. Lisa Rowe putting the ball in. And we've been waiting for this all game, but the Canadian and American front rows are now starting to play around with each other. It's infamous in international rugby, the front rows like to play around when they come into contact. It's kind of a power thing. Americans win the hook. Christian Baja decides to play it infield and is partially blocked by Canadians, which puts everybody on side. Katie Stewart on top of the play, making the tackle. Canadians recycle. Canadian fly half. Christy Smith has the ball, has been able to get it off to their second row, who's having a tremendous game. That's Lauren Smithson. But she's knocked it on in the tackle. I was hoping for a little more controlled second half, but it's starting out sloppy just like it did last half. A lot of knock ons early. The coaches won't be really happy with that. But these players are trying to earn their spots on the national team and they're trying to do a little too much and once in a while the ball will get knocked on in that occasion. 
Americans putting in. Quickly out, back row play, picked by the eight with the flanker. It's a very nice play. Triscuit counter the ball. Lisa Rowe, Aaron throw to the fly half. Christian Baja getting launched by the Canadian forwards. But the ball's now come out, very nicely taken. Katie Stewart with a breakup. Passes it out. Laura McDonald taking it nicely to Kate Turpin. Gets it outside to Jenny Goodfriend. Kicks it upfield. She didn't have much option. Rolls out of bounds. It'll be a Canadian line out. It was a very nice play by the Americans on the uh, scrum. It was a quick pickup by the eight, and the flankers joined in and drove. That was the first time the Americans had really shown any propensity to dominate the Canadians. The Americans have been outnumbered again in the lineout. It is the fourth time they've been called for not matching numbers. That is unheard of at this level. Canadians have the option now. They're going to tap, run. They're going to get right back into that old offense. Here comes the crashing forwards. You can see a little different option than a punch off of this. You see? Quickly out. Yes, they're going to use the space now because of the wind. Center's running hard, very fast wing. Canadians and Rose Baker crashing up the left side of the field for the Canadians. Pushed out of bounds. And it's going to be an American scrum. He actually, I think, signaling a forward pass. Yes, that's what it was. And I think that was called by the touch judge. The official on the sideline at this level can suggest calls to the referee, referee taking his call. Ball's been knocked out of bounds again. Hey. Well, look at the announcers. There is an intelligent looking group of people right there. My color commentator on my left is Kim O'Brien. She's the best in the business. She hasn't said a thing all game. And then we'll take it back to the play. The Americans are defending. Canadians are now out to the fly who knocks it on. And the Americans will have a scrum on the 10 meter mark, 40 meters from their try zone. Americans will be putting in. Lisa Rowe will be putting in the ball. Lisa, who is a sevens player, trying to play 15s, throwing it out to the 10. Christian Baja taking a nice play. Oh, good opportunity there for the American eight. Helen Beta, but it didn't work out, and the scrum down will be to Canada. The Americans are trying a number of different things that they didn't try in the first half, and that's a good thing because playing against the wind, they're going to need to run to get it upfield. Kicking is not going to be an option. One by the, the ball was put in, one by the Canadians. Nicely put, fullback filled. She's a very nice runner. Breaks through, poor tackling by the Americans. As she kicked, she was dragged down, but the referee has called that it was a simultaneous move. So there's no penalty. Jen Sinkler passing out to Kate Turpin. Very nice counterattack by the Americans. She throws the ball out. Oh no, that's American break. American breakdown. The Canadians are now powering in. They're close to their goal line. Penalty has been called on the Americans for coming in for the wrong side. Uh, the Canadians are now have a very strong opportunity. The wind is disrupting everybody's play here. Switch back by the inside center. Canadians still have the ball. They have numbers out to their left. Flanker running strong, holding the ball. They have numbers out. This should be a try for Canada. Oh, did she get a very nice tackle, but you cannot tackle around the neck. The referee has awarded a penalty try. The, the Canadian fly half would have scored if she hadn't been neck tied by Katie Stewart. So he awards a penalty try, which is between the posts, and she's coming back. As you can see, the ball's taken in by the center. It's quickly recycled. The flanker takes it in. It'll be quickly recycled again. The number 10 is get 
given the ball as she tries to go inside. She is just, oh, and I apologize to Katie Stewart. That was Laura McDonald who necktied her. But regardless, it is a Canadian try, and because it was a penalty try, it's awarded between the posts, which makes it a very simple conversion. And when she makes this kick, it will be 15-14. The kick, as you notice, Jen Sinkler tried to block it. When, anybody, when the kicker makes any forward motion towards the ball in an attempt to kick, that is the signal for the defense to charge if they would so deem. And uh, Jen is very fast. She tried it, but points through. It's 15-14. Kickoff will be at half, obviously. Drop kick by Christian Baja. The Canadians will be receiving, as I say, in the first half. When you score, you get the ball back. Very nice high kick. Americans should be all over her. She's tied up nicely. Jen Sinkler down there quickly on the coverage. Ball's out. The Canadians are running their typical crash play. Been thrown out to their fly. Dummy inside hits the outside center. Very nice, strong run with the tackler on her. They're going to recycle again. The Canadians have consistently had numbers on the outside. Americans are getting sucked in on defense everywhere. Canadian held on to the ball in that play, though. The American making a nice attempt to take it, and a penalty has been awarded to the Americans. Canadians must be back 10. Christian Baja has selected to go for post, so if she does make this against the wind, it'll be worth three points. This will be a... Uh, Christian has a leg, but this is a hard kick. This wind is fairly strong today. Uh, it's kind of hard to see at field level, but the flags all around the field are blowing uh, quite heavily. So as she prepares, this would be very nice because the Canadians have been uh, dominating so far this half. So if she could make this kick, that would uh, be a huge bonus. is two for three today. It's coming in. I don't know the wind. It's going to be close. It's good. It just fell over the crossbar. That side of the true professional, she ju judged it perfectly. Not wasting any leg. She's now three for four. Score now being 18-14. Very nice. She got under it. Nice straight kick. See how the wind held it up, and she had just enough to get it over. Very nice kick. Canadians will be very upset about that. Drop out by the Canadian fly half. The Americans have taken it. Jen's taking it hard going in. Lisa Rowe trying to dig that out. The Canadian forwards have been very aggressive at breakdowns. Lady Kaplan making a nice weave through. Very nicely handed off to an American substitute. Lori Rifke. Americans driving, they still have the ball. As long as they're driving forward, the referee will not blow the whistle, but as long, when they stop, they must play the ball or they'll lose it. Lisa Rowe does have it. And Lisa Rowe attempts a kick that's blocked. Uh, and we're called for Chris, the crossing of the arms by the referee signals that the player with the ball ran behind somebody, which is a block, and you cannot block in rugby. Quickly outside. Okay, Canadians have the ball. They've picked and gone weak again. Probably the scrum half was buried in there. They're going to try to get it out now. Canadians are recycling. There it is, quickly out to their fly half. They're going to use a crash ball with their fullback, who's been very effective on that play. Quickly recycled, knock on by the Canadians. As she went to pick it up, she knocked it forward. Aggressive error, but you hate to see that at this point of the field, unless, of course, you're an American spectator. So we loved it. Americans quickly get it out. Baja gets it. Nice pass. Americans are still going upfield. Taken. And a very nice movement by all players. 
went out to the wing, Libby Kaplan looping, and the Americans quickly gained 25, 30 meters on that play. Though it will be the Canadian ball, this is a much better situation for the Americans than where they were before. Canadians have chosen to go with a shorter line out again. And the Americans still have not marked numbers. But fortunately for them, they've been called for not throwing in straight. The ball must go down the tunnel, which is called, the tunnel is between the two teams. If it doesn't go straight down the middle, it is a call against. The Canadians go up early, easily taken by the Americans then, who are now driving. Canadians have stopped it. The Americans are gonna need to move the ball. Lisa Rowe quickly to Christian Bajo, who makes a very nice break on the inside. Uh, it's too bad. She should have taken and eaten the ball. Tries to force a pass. But now it's, it's the Canadians now have it. They're taking in this nice tackle. But the Canadian forwards are going to recycle this ball quickly. I would bet the Canadians kick this. Canadian flyup is having a very hard time today catching, though. It's a hard way to play rugby if you can't catch or kick. So, she's been called for obstruction. Like I said, when the referee crosses his arms, that means a player with the ball has run behind a player without it. And rugby, there is no blocking. And even if it's accidental and a player obstructs, that is a penalty. And so Christian Baja will have another attempt at three points. So the Americans are playing very aggressively, though they haven't been putting a lot of plays together. Their defense has been so aggressive in this end of the field that the Canadians are making a lot of mistakes. Let's see if Christian can put this one through. She's three for four so far today. Christian in her uh, playing days, is she's a very streaky kicker. When she's on, she's on. <laughs> she kicks the whole game well, but and she started out strong, so I would anticipate that she would make this. She's getting ready to approach the ball. Very nicely struck. Ah, yes. And the wind dying down perfectly at the right moment, and the kick is made. It is now 21-14 USA. Very nice kick by... She got great mechanics and she really strikes the ball well. She really drove that ball, especially against the wind. Drop out by the Canadians to restart. Bounced, uh-oh. Libby Kaplan takes it, Kate Turpin's going to take it into the forwards. They're gonna have to recycle the ball quickly. The Americans are gonna try to run it out. They actually had the numbers, but uh, the Canadian fly-off was quickly there to stop them from getting the ball out. Ball's now moved out. Libby Kaplan outside. Libby Kaplan playing blindside flanker very quick forward. I think the referee is not going to be pleased with her holding on, but the Canadians have stripped her anyway, so it isn't going to matter. Canadians turn it over. The attack on the blind side. Jen Sinkler's quickly up to take the wing. Jen Sinkler's playing a very strong game. Very nice tackle and turn, but the Canadian presents to her own side. Dummy switch inside, fullback Phil. Out to, well I know that's not their scrum app playing at wing, so they must. she must be playing wing, subbing. The Canadians are still driving. They're taking the punch up the weak side. The Americans have numbers, but they're not doing anything aggressively right now. The Canadians are really running at them. Oh, and this happens numbers of times today. The Canadians have force their own mistake. Lisa taking the ball quickly. Lisa Rose a very fast scrum math. Passing it out. Laura McDonald looping on the play. And the Americans kick it out of bounds. Which will be a Canadian's line out. And uh, when you see the play go back and forth like you just saw the last couple of uh, plays the players uh, obviously winded because without the whistle, and the 
field, a rugby field is 70 meters wide. So you think about it, they're going side to side to side to side. That is one tremendous amount of running, just like playing soccer, except that there's contact in this, not like soccer. So this is much harder and better. Americans driving forwards. Lisa Road opting to kick, keeping it in field. Ball bounces to the fullback, but she covers well, takes her. Very nice tackle by Christian Baja. Very nice tackle. Canadians have it out. They have numbers. The fly half is yet to kick with the wind. I think she got zooed out in the first half. Ball's now out to the forwards, quickly out to all the forwards running. It's the punch play again. Canadians clear out. Americans are outflanked on the right side. She kicks the ball, it's in place. Though the uh, Canadian fly half tried to do a soccer dive, the ref had no part of it. Kicks back to the Americans. We have a knock on by the Americans. If you noticed when the, the Canadian kicker kicked it, she was simultaneously kicked as hit. That's legal, but obviously if she had kicked it and then taken a step and gotten hit, that would have been a penalty. The Canadian tried to draw the penalty from the ref, but being a good referee, he would have no part of it. And there is no place for that in rugby anyway. And this must be the official timeout for water, being that it's a warm day here. So the Americans are up 21-14. We're close to halfway through the second half. Like I said, the referee is the only one who really knows how much time's left, but I would say about 20 minutes. Americans have done quite well against the wind. Canadians came out hard the first five minutes, but since then, the Americans have been able to hold them in the middle of the field, and that's uh, very, very good against this wind. Especially with the lead, that's all they really want to do is just keep them out of their end. Trainers checking in to a couple of the players, but I don't think it's anything too bad. I think it's just the, all the minor little things. Cramps, cuts, abrasions, nothing too hardcore. This is a beautiful field here, and these players gotta love this. This is one of the nicest rugby fields in the United States. This is a beautiful facility up here in Blaine, and these guys, especially Aaron, is bent over backwards to uh, really showcase this facility. Canadians will be putting in this scrub. Ball's in, hooked by the Canadians. They were trying to go weak, but the ball bounced out. Laura McDonald takes quickly to Christian. Nice counter, Katie Stewart up. Uh, unfortunately, the centers were a little too flat. Canadians steal the ball, but it's been recycled by the Americans. The American forwards have really become aggressive lately. Katie Stewart, Tried to place the ball down. Uh, I think the referee might have missed one of those. It should have been a knock on, but Canadians get the ball back. It's blocked. A blocked kick is not a knock on. It's actually a continuation of the kick, so it, there's no knock forward. Up to the fullback, makes a throw a dummy, tackle. Actually, very sloppy on the outside. Very sloppy. Canadian fullback tried to throw a dummy. She got hit by the American, then she tried to throw the pass. It was missed by her counterpart, and everybody now is taking a little time and sucking some air. For most of the teams, this is, uh, the Canadians are right in the midst of their season. Uh, their season goes from April through October, where in the, in the United States, most of the seasons, except for in California, are spring and fall. So. A lot of the American players are just getting back into their season, so their, their game conditioning isn't quite what they would like it to be. There'll be a scrum down now. Lisa Rowe will be putting the ball in. Puts it in. Americans hook it back. Ball's at the eight's feet. They choose to go weak to Jen Sinkler right off the pick. Jen's thrown down, but she has given the pass off to the eight. The Americans still have the ball but they need to get it to the deck or the referee's gonna blow them up for it. I think the Canadians have turned the ball over and they have. The ball will now go to the Canadians. Be a 
scrum down to the Canadians. I think the Americans are going to be quite content to uh, keep them in their end if the Canadians haven't figured out how to get out. And obviously, with this win, the best way would be to kick. But the fly F is uh, not kicking. I uh, don't understand that. On most rugby teams, the number 10 is one of the most proficient kickers, and she's had a lot of trouble with that. We have a player down again. Obviously, as the game wears on, the fatigue factor, cramps come in. They've had lots of scrums. They've really been pounding on each other. You'll start to see this. In rugby, in rugby the referee has the ability to stop play for safety reasons. There are 15 players on the field, and each team has seven subs they're allowed, and that's it. It's not a freewheeling substitution. And once you're substituted for, you can't come back onto the field. I would say this looks like from the looks like a cramp. It looks like the scrum half who's down, and Lisa Rowe is notorious for cramping up. Looks like she's okay. She had a couple in the first half. seem to be adjusting now. I'd be surprised if Lisa wasn't substituted for her. Aggressive, aggressive hit by the Americans. It's, it's a Canadian put in. But the Americans took the advantage and really popped the Canadians. That's a very smart play, even, even though he called it up. The Canadians got it back. The Americans are really starting to take over in the scrums. They've been turning the Canadians quite freely. Ball's back, Jenny Goodfriend's gonna field this quickly out to Kate Turpin, who takes it nicely up the center of the field. Jen Sinkler's looped back beautifully across. The two centers play the ball. Oh, the uh, referee is calling a dirty play on the Canadian flanker number seven for playing the person who wasn't involved with the ball. And that's gonna be 10. And Christian Baja has now signaled for three points. Point for post. Christian's hot on her kick, so she made one from about this spot earlier in the half. And uh, I think she has a confidence and she's one of those. Christian is now going to take this. If she makes this kick, the Canadian flanker is going to be very upset with herself. And so is the coach. Christian approached the ball. Uh, this one's going to fall short. Actually, she pushed it also. But the, with having the lead, getting taking the kick is a kind of a time issue. It killed. The, uh, the dropout. The dropout was taken by the Americans. The Canadians have the ball. The Americans are pushing over. The Canadians are recycling the ball. The advantage has been awarded to the Canadians. He has a signal for what? It's out to the Canadian backs who have been, the American backs have been all over them. Uh, penalty has been awarded for the Americans diving over. The Canadians are going to go quickly because the Amer Americans are not back 10. They're going to re they're going to gain 10 on this. Canadian number 17 running over one of the Americans. Americans are tackling, but they're not together. Canadians are going to get start to get. I think the Canadians will start running their punch plays again to regain some kind of momentum in this. The Americans are all over. Americans weren't back 10, so he's going to go back and award the advantage. As was obvious, Christian did not make the extra point, or not the extra point, but the penalty kick. And in rugby, the only way you know they make it is when the touch judges put their flags up. So that's how you pay attention to that. Nice, nice aggressive tackling by the Americans. Canadians are out. The fly up chooses to pass. It obviously is one of their tactics is just to run and not kick. 
but I think with this wind, it's a mistake. Nice steal by the American. Oh. The referee signaled that a ruck was formed and that she couldn't have her hands in. Canadians go quickly, they're 10. Now they can be tackled. Quick break. Oh. That's how little people tackle big people. And, uh, and, uh, and the little person got smocked. Uh, you cannot leave your feet to tackle. Uh, you, if you're diving and you're doing a thigh tackle, that's legal. But to jump up on somebody like that, that's not legal. Uh, but number 17 for the Canadians is one of their uh, props. And number nine for the Americans is a scrum match, which is kind of a physical mismatch. Uh, but of course she paid the price because she pulled her right down on top of her. So she, uh, she got a little flattened on that play. Penalty has been awarded to Canada, who is quickly out to the fly half. Looping back in to their forwards. I would anticipate a punch play. Here they go. Another crash. They're recycling the ball again. The Americans are messing it up pretty good, though. They are getting good at that right now. They've been very uh, courageous this half at doing that. Even though the Canadians now were driving forward and will have the scrum, they stopped all their forward momentum. Be a Canadian put in on the scrum. Canadians are inside the 22. It's a dangerous situation for the Americans. They'll have to play fairly, fairly. They'll have to play incredibly tenacious defense now to keep them out. It's a quick eight pick. Nice inside center and another knock on by the Canadians. Canadians lost the ball, the Americans are driving forward. The referee will be playing advantage, so the Americans basically have a free play on this one. And there's the call on the knock on. The Canadians have to use stickier sunblock. I know they're not used to this much sun, so we'll have to do something better next time. Put in will be the Americans, and I would bet they go to their right, which would be away from us. Christian Baja using her foot to just place it down. Very nice take by the Canadian wing. Excellent play. Takes it up. The American there in numbers, and the Canadian did not release. One of her teammates coming in fell to the ground over the top of the ball. You cannot bury the ball under your body. So the Americans more than likely will kick for touch and, and then have a line out. Kick for touch. The point is not to get that far. I mean, against this wind, you're not going to get it too far the field. But she does gain 20 meters and it still is our throw. And the Americans have been going with full line outs, have been very successful in the front. be throwing to Helen made up again. She's been dominating that front. She's rotated back to the middle. Nice high, oh, nice throw. He's called for the knock on. The referee's called that it wasn't thrown straight. It's been, been very hard to throw those back throws because of the wind. And the referee turned to look at the Canadian captain, who's number 10, to find out if she wanted a scrum or a line out. She chose a line out which is probably not the best option, <laughs> as was just proven. Americans get a huge break on this. They've won the ball. There's now been a penalty call against Canada. Basically, the Canadians have taken themselves out of number, numerous, numerous plays. They've uh, been offsides, they've dropped balls. 
The Americans have been aggressive, but the Canadians have made a lot of mistakes. Nice try by the wing to keep it in, but it uh, doesn't really matter because in rugby, if you try to knock the ball back in, even if you would hit it in bounds, if you fall out of bounds, it is not bounds. The ball will be thrown in by the Americans with a full line out. The Canadians are looking to defend the front of the line out, so the Americans are going to throw to the back. They go short and burn them up short. Nice drive by the Americans. They beautifully roll it to get away from the Canadians. They've reset their mall. It's now out. Christian Baja throws a skip. Uh, miscommunication there in the centers on about what they were going to do. It should have been a skip play. The inside center thought it was to her, tried to catch that and knocked it on. That's unfortunate because they had numbers on that play. For all you boys and girls watching, and you're playing rugby, when somebody throws the ball really hard at you and you're going really fast, it's probably not meant for you. It's probably meant for the person next to you. And that's, Katie should have let that one go. Ball's put in by the Canadians. Lisa Rowe hooks her hand, beautifully ties her up. Tackled by the way forward. The Canadians still are regrouping though and winning the ball. The Americans are content with just tying this ball up here at this part of the field. Uh, the Americans are going to be called for diving over, coming in from the fringe, you name it, they did it. Quickly out, nice play, nice break. Outside center with an excellent break. The Americans have the numbers. The American backs have been playing incredibly great defense. They've been all over them. And it's, it shows right there, the Canadian cannot get the ball out because the, the American center, outside center, Tyshawn Henry was all over here. <laughs> They'll kick for touch. Out of bounds. Content to kill time now. It's getting close to five to six minutes left in this game, and the Americans are going to be content just to you know, get it out of bounds, just keep this game uh, slower than it already has been. Throw in. Now by Lori Rickon. Canadians are anticipating jump early, though. The, the catch was not taken by the original jumper. The Americans still have won the ball. Bosch is going to take the crash. Nice inside pass. Donald, excellent, excellent running. KJ Abel there and a nice take. They're driving up field. Lisa Rowe has the ball out to Christian. She's got players inside her. Well taken. Oh, it's unfortunate. It went straight down. The ref did not signal that it was not a knock on, that it went straight to deck. The Americans have a really good chance here. They keep it in tight. Don't go out wide. Nice take by Lee Kaplan. The Americans are recycling the ball. They're going to get a penalty. Oh, that's unfortunate. They called against them. Holding onto the ball. KJ Abel is down, but the play goes on because she's away from the play. They will not stop for an injury. They're gonna take her off the pitch so she doesn't get run over by anybody else. Canadians coils around the ball. We got players down everywhere now. It's starting, this fatigue is starting to set in. Nice pass by the Canadian inside center to their fullback. Canadian fullback has been one of the best players on the field. Canadians recycle the ball, quickly out to one of their reserve forwards, but she doesn't have numbers, but she gets it away. Scrum half is done. That, yeah, and she's lucky she didn't get yellow carded for it. Diving over the ball, diving over the ball. The uh, referee is not happy right now. You know, the, the Canadian dive, crashing in, she doesn't have numbers, but she nicely puts it back. She grabs it, and the player dives right over the top and grabs her. You cannot do that. 
cannot dive over from the side. It, in fact, the referee was very lenient. In rugby, you can be yellow carded and red carded just like soccer. If you're yellow carded in rugby, it's a 10 minute break <laughs> where you sit down and your team plays short. She's very lucky she didn't get carded on that. Nice throw by the Canadians. The Americans chose not to contest because the Canadians are gonna drive. Americans are trying to defend, but they're right on the line. The Americans have been called for a penalty, probably collapsing the mall. They're gonna run a crash play from their back wing. Tackled very nicely by the backs, but the penalty's been called for collapsing. They're gonna go quickly. Could be a Canadian try. And it is a Canadian try. It is now 21 to 19. Though it is a long kick, she does have the wind. So she makes this, it's a tie match. Which would be appropriate. Player down, that was very smart play by the Canadians. Uh, by taking it over quickly, the Americans were having trouble regrouping and they just crashed right back at her. Ball, it seals back, he comes in. This is going, this game is gonna, this kick could really decide the game. The game, like I said, games are 40 minute halves. We're getting very close to the 80 minute mark and the referee knows how much injury time there has been. Now there's been more injury time this half than the first half, but this might be the last chance for either team to score. So if she makes this, we could end up with a tie game. If she misses this, Americans could dodge a bullet. See what happens here. She's proven to be a good kicker. Uh, She is uh, opting for not a long kick, but a sharper angle. But she is a right-footed sidewinder, so it'll hook beautifully into the post for this wind. So she should have no trouble with the distance. The accuracy is gonna be the issue. She has the distance, but she's off to the side. So the score is 21-19, the USA over Canada. There is not much time left in this. We are now probably into injury time. So if the Americans can now kick off, my uh, my bet would be they try to kick it fairly deep and try to keep the Canadians pinned down as far back as they can instead of kicking short and trying to recover the ball. But that's just this lowly announcer's opinion. Christian Baja just asked the referee how much time there is. <laughs> and there's not much time left. She's gonna take it, gets this win. It does make it 10. Oh, almost taken by the Americans. Canadians do regroup, and they do have the ball. Americans just gonna have to play smart now because the Canadians know that they're down by two with no time left. They're gonna be coming at them full bore. Oh, knock on by the Canadian. Biggest trouble they've been having all game is that 9-10 combination. Uh, Canadians, I think, would have had a much better game if they'd had another number 10. Somebody else uh, is down or obviously, actually the official on the far side has called something and the referee is discussing it. Usually when they have a fairly lengthy discussion, it's either been extracurricular activity, and that's exactly what's going on, which means somebody either said hi to somebody with their fist, or they were cheating in some way that the referee doesn't like. And that's what they're talking right now. If they're going to the Canadian, that means that the Canadian number 17, because that's number 10's a captain, Number 17 probably threw a punch. So, that's what they did. 
He probably threw a punch. That's what this signals. He threw a punch, but not enough to be carded. The Americans have a penalty. I'm sure, Christian Baja will kick for touch. The Americans will try to win this line out and drive it in. Ah, but the ball stays in field. Nice, taken, nice big step. Beautiful big step by Gary Bray. Americans are just like I said, oh, but the Canadians turn it over. Now the fly up finally discovers her foot, but she kicks it directly to the fullback. Jenny Goodfriend just got destroyed on that tackle. Jenny Goodfriend plays for one of the Minnesota teams in Minnesota Valkyrie. She's one of the toughest players I know. She takes that hit and she just gets right up like it never even phased her. Canadians put in, eight pick to the nine. Dummy out, out to the wing with no support. Beautiful tackle by Christian Baja who's played strong defensively all game. Canadians had no options. Their forwards were all on the wrong side of the ball. Uh, the Americans are going to get called for this. They're going to have to be careful here because the Canadians are going to put this downfield. Oh, I think that's an incredibly harsh call by the referee, but I don't have the view he does. Quickly out to the backs. Oh, they have numbers. Oh, and they throw the ball. Knock on by the wing. Every forward's nightmare in rugby is a wing knocking it on. That means you have to run 60 meters across the field to do another scrum. There's not much time left in this game. It's 21-19 the USA. I would think that they might even think about just kicking this thing out of bounds. I don't know how much time left, but the players on the field do, because usually the referee's kind enough to tell them. Starting to get a little sloppy in that front row. The Canadians are sensing the urgency. Obviously, they don't want to lose. Americans win the hook. Lisa has it quickly to Baja. He's going to play crash ball, very conservative, which is smart. Forwards are going to recycle. Canadians have turned her, though. They have the ball. Scrum half quickly out to the backs. Backs are all off sides on the Americans, but nobody has seen it. Obviously, they're stealthy. Forwards crash ball. They're going to come crash again. Here we go. They don't have the numbers. It's not going to work. Canadian tackled nicely. The Americans have got to get a whistle. I think the whistle will be the game. The Canadians are recycling the ball very nicely. Very nice play. Scrum half had no option. The forwards were all lost. Oh my God, a little mistake here. Penalty down, this could actually be game. She's gonna go for posts and make it win, miss it, lose. No pressure. Hardest thing to teach young players is sometimes the ball pops out and you can't get it. And uh, number eight, Helen made up. She saw that ball and could not stop from going to it. Here she goes. I think it's off to the right. I think it's through the middle. They make it. She made it, and that's game. And that's game. The Canadians win 22-21 on a mistake made by a young player. And even though it's very harsh, she'll never do it again. The inside center was the kicker for the Canadians. She was very good all day. It was Charlotte Haley. Um, and uh, very hard fought game. The wind was very nice. She barely missed that extra point on the other side. But this time, she was able to just lay it out in the wind and it just guided straight through the post. It's a two 
teams celebrate on the field. One team celebrates on the field. The other team commiserates. As rugby tradition is, the two teams will shake hands with each other. But it was a great, great hard fought game. Technically, it wasn't the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, but the spirit and everybody tried their best out there. And uh, the Can-Am tradition will go on. Thank everybody for watching this. And uh, the Can-Am hopefully will be here again in the next couple of years. And we'll see you a second time. The National Sports Minnesota Media Archive is brought to you by North Metro TV. Your support helps make the archive possible. If you like this video, please consider a one-time donation.